So as we can see, I've got the inverter on, which is good. Um, I was a bit worried for a while that I hadn't left myself enough clearance at the back. Um, I have had to chop part of the inverter off here. There's a big bracket there, which was stopping me from getting it on. Um, I am obviously very close to the firewall uh, here, and I'm very close to the brake lines up here, but I'm just gonna have to monitor that um, and uh, just check that obviously I'm not gonna chafe on these when the motor actually gets going. If there is a problem, I guess I, I, there's a bit of leeway here. I can push these back a bit further and get things out of the way. I could probably potentially chop some of the fire warming. This is obviously just a sound deadening uh, material. I could get that out of the way. Biggest problem is here, this coolant pipe. I can't get to it. Um, that's a bit of a cock up on my part, but I'm not that worried because I think what I'll do is I'll remove the inverter. I can cut, I mean, again, this, this padding comes off, but I can cut probably part of the the far wall out the way and just thread the pipe like a u-bend around down so although not ideal it fits it's in there it's on and it looks pretty cool actually so that's the first thing the second thing i want to chat about are my engine mounts see that one there it's just bolted on to the adapter plate and then the other side over here bolted on to the adapter plate now i've had people contact me saying they're worried that when this whole motor rotates under torque, that it's uh, it's because of the length that I've got here, it's just gonna rip this off. Um, but just to say that, I mean, this bar here is actually 10 mil thick structural steel. Uh, that's a six mil part uh, is welded onto to give it its kind of T structure. Um, the welding was done by a structural company. So that's been uh, what I would call professionally welded. And he said to me that this 10 mil bar would bend before that weld breaks. So I kind of take it that this structure here is pretty damn strong. But other people online are seeming to say that the, the rotational forces um, under torque here will will basically rip uh, these mountings off and this will then come free and, and wedge and just obviously cause chaos and, and destruction. But I'm not so sure because this, this motor only actually generates about 10-15% more torque than the Wankel engine. Uh, yes, that's when the Wankel engine is doing 5,500 RPM, whereas this will do it from uh, obviously a standstill and, and produce that torque across the across the whole range. But it made me realise that, you know, this is only a 100 horsepower motor. It's not very powerful, really, and although it does produce a lot of torque, I don't want to get too carried away thinking that its torque levels are really, really, really high, because they're just not. And um, the other thing to note is that the, this, the, the power plant frame that mounts onto the gearbox is a fixed structure. So from the back of the car, all the way to the gearbox, all the way to the end, to the adapter plates, to the motor, it's all one solid unit going right back to the rear axle. And it, it can't really rotate. It's, it's just fixed at the rear axle. It's fixed on with uh, four high tensile bolts. Um, it can't really rotate. It can go up and down. So I can bob the thing up and down, and it obviously bobs up and down on the engine mounts. That's fine, um, but just rotational-wise, I see it being very fixed, which is unusual, because obviously most cars would have engine mounts, but they wouldn't have the whole uh, drive train mounted back to the rear axle like, like the RX-8 does. And I don't know if the RX-8 has it like that because the Wankel engine was obviously a, a fully rotational device, a bit like an electric engine. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, but I just can't see where these will fail. You know, I've got my adapter plate in there. I can't see, I've had a couple of other people say that they reckon the motor, because I haven't mounted the motor to the to the uh, chassis, I've, I've done it just to the adapter plate. They reckon the motor might shear itself from the adapter plate itself. But again, I mean, that's, I've got six bolts and two dowels, which a company that's about, it's about 700 mil of metal it would have to shear off to to do that to break the motor away from the adapter plate I can't see that uh, I can't see my uh, bracket here breaking um, the only thing I could see really is that this if it was lifting one of these sides up it could potentially shear the top of this bolt off but I don't think it would cause I don't think that would just instantly fail either I think this would it would it would become loose and damaged and it would stretch the bolt um, which would probably give me a lot of indication if I keep, as long as I keep my eye on it that this thing was going to fail at some point. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really out there looking for, for some help and guidance on that. You know, what do you guys think? Is there any structural engineers out there that say, no, Dave, 
this is going to fail, that's going to fail spectacularly and you're going to end up with an engine on the floor. Um, or is it okay? Because, you know, taking the power plant frame into account, it, um, it's pretty damn solid. I just, I struggle to see how this thing can rotate um, in this mechanism uh, anywhere to the degree that, you know, it, it would shatter and start breaking things. Um, I am worried about this. I am worried about the clearance. I do think there could be potentially the five mil of movement, you know, up, even if it's up or down. Um, so I think these will need to be moved out of the way. But um, beyond that, let me know your thoughts. So I'm really, really interested because, you know, if it's if these mounts aren't good enough, it really does involve, you know, taking the whole lot out and getting new new mounts made, and uh, or getting some some mounts made to actually bolt onto the back maybe and and uh, you know accompany it uh, uh, complement it i guess the word to, to make it work so uh, yeah comment below subscribe all those kind of things i'm really interested to see what you guys think and um even if your comments are that you know you think this is good you think i'll be fine um i'd like to know either way good or bad let me know and um we'll see if we need to make any changes